Welcome to today's lecture. In today's lecture, we shall talk about the flow-through system. Now, we have been talking about the pond system. A pond system is something like a passive system, where the water is somewhat stagnant with some flows there. And, and here, we shall talk about a very different system, a flow-through system. Now, a waterfall is the ultimate flow-through system, where the water flows through a certain cross-section of the land. Now, the advantage of a flow-through system versus a passive system is the water quality. And the first water quality that we shall introduce today is the most important in aquaculture, which is dissolved oxygen. Now, I have here with me a dissolved oxygen meter and I have calibrated it to the air around me. So, I assuming the air around me is full of oxygen, which is 21%. So, this is the, the saturation level I've calibrated to that. I shall explain about that later on. But now, I shall test the oxygen level in this flow-through system. Now, we have recorded about 93%, 94% of dissolved oxygen. Um, it, dissolved oxygen can be expressed in percent saturation and it can also be expressed as parts per million. In this case, 7.99 parts per million. In theory, a flow-through system should have the maximum amount of oxygen that is possible. And the more oxygen you have, the better it is for your fish. Now, I want you to observe carefully this river system, this waterfall system. Look at how the water is churned up, foaming. And just have a look at it. Now, being in a natural ecosystem like this brings back a lot of memories to me. When I was a child, I, I used to go to waterfall systems and I would be very amazed at the beauty of it all, especially when we see uh, clear waters like this. And very often, we, don't, we forget, as an aquaculturist, we forget that what we are trying to do is to imitate this natural ecosystem. Now, these are perhaps the best system there is for aquaculture. That is why um, there is a lot of life in this river. Uh, there are fishes there and probably there are prawns hidden in the nooks and crannies. Um, and in aquaculture, if we are able to imitate this, we already have the best system. Now in a while, I will attempt to imitate a flow-through system by building a raceway. But, uh, but let me give you a tip. Uh, a lot of you have expressed interest in aquaculture field. Always attempt to imitate whatever that is already in the nature, like a flow-through system. And, and in that way, we can always replicate the best system that is for our culture programs. That is why um, some of you are asking about the Project Refugium. The Project Refugium is an attempt to bring such ecosystem back to the lab and to recreate its parameters and to culture fish larvae in it. Uh, unfortunately, now the lab is not open, so a lot of you cannot participate in it. But when the lab is reopened, we can all work on it together. Now, look over here. Is that the biggest end you have seen or not? My finger is beside it. Now, there's another colony of ants here. I'm not sure whether it's termites or ants. But it's, it's very amazing.
Now look at something amazing here. At the trail of ants, at the side of the trail, there are these soldier ants guarding it. Look at this. It's coming from me. These are soldier ants. Now, I'm not sure whether you have heard of such a thing as ant farming. Um, apparently, it's a, it's a big hobby out there where people take ants and, and farm it. They build their colony in their house. So, I wonder if any of you are doing this. If you are, um, please share it with me and I in turn will share it with the class. I think it's a very interesting hobby if you have it. So, you can maybe, if you do ha have this hobby, share, share, tell us how you do it. And it seems that if Malaysia is a very good place, if you're into ant farming, we have lots of ants here. Now, this is the entrance to the under, yeah, underground system. And look at the soldier ants guarding the entrance. And right beside the entrail is this nice looking mushroom. We have talked about mushroom briefly before. Mushroom is a kind of fungus that has this mycorrhizal system. It's like a root system that penetrates the whole of the rotten wood here. So when the condition is suitable, it will sprout out its mushroom. This is, this is actually like the fruit of the mushroom. Now let's talk more about dissolved oxygen. Now, uh, okay, assuming this line is the separation between the water and the air. Let's assume this is a cross section and this is the air that I'm breathing and this is the water where the fish lives. Now, in the air, there are oxygen molecules. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, let's for this example, assume there are 8 oxygen molecules in the air and let's put 8 oxygen molecule. No, let's just put 5. 5 oxygen molecule in here. Under equilibrium condition, the amount of molecule in the air and the amount of molecule in the water is stable. So, if it's in equilibrium, However long you leave it, 10 hours, 1 hour, 2 days, 10 days, 1 week, the amounts will be the same. Some will enter this and some will exit, some will enter, some will exit. This is what it means to be in equilibrium. Now, un at this stage, at equilibrium condition, we say that the water is 100% saturated with oxygen. So that means that is the, norm the maximum amount of oxygen it can take in naturally. Now, is it possible to let it go beyond the five oxygen molecule here. We can. We can actually pressurize the system and force the air molecule to enter. Now at this stage, it is more than 100%. So sometimes you can have like uh, 110, 120% air saturation. That time we call it super saturated. So um, super saturated condition is not good for fish. It can cause a lot of diseases. So ideally, we want to aim for the 100% saturation, which in our case is just 5 molecules. Now, if under deficient condition, there will be less molecule, let's say just 3. Now, under this condition, the oxygen is said to be uh, not saturated and it can go down like to 90%, 80%, 70%. Usually, different species of fish have different requirements. Some tolerate low oxygen, some don't. So it really depends on the fish species. But for a healthy system, we always want to aim for 100%. 90 to 100% is a good range for aquaculture. I 
ideally near 100%. So we want the maximum saturation there is. So this is the concept behind dissolved oxygen. Now bear in mind, when the oxygen is dissolved in the water, it enters the water as a whole molecule. We know that oxygen is O2, two oxygen atoms combined together, it enters as a whole. It does not dissociate. It's not like salt. Salt has a sodium, sodium atom and chloride ion. When it enters into water, it dissociates. Oxygen do not. Oxygen enters the water as a whole molecule. And that is why sometimes it is argued that uh, oxygen is a physical parameter rather than a chemical parameter. Now the oxygen level here, according to my meter, is about 90%. But I suspect something is wrong with my meter, it should be near 100. Because when we have churnings of water like this, it is almost inevitable, uh, unavoidable, that it will be 100% saturation. So it probably needs some calibration going on here. Now, one thing about dissolved oxygen meter is, it must be operated under condition of water flow. For example, if I want to read this, I must put it in areas where the water is flowing. Now, in stagnant areas, let's say in, if I want to measure a stagnant pool of water like this here, if we let it go on, the, water, the reading will keep plummeting down and down. That is why we need to constantly swirl the probe in the water. If you look at the meter, it's stabilizing. If I, if I stop it, it goes down. Now the reason for this is because this relies on an electrolysis process. There's a liquid here and there is two different kinds of metal in here that reacts using the electrolysis. So it is constantly reacting with the oxygen molecule in the water uh, to give you the electrical reading. And that is why if you don't move the water around, when it exhausts the oxygen, it will give you a false low reading. So that is why we need to move this around. Now, if you go for aquaculture internship uh, in an aquaculture facility, this is one thing you will most probably do. And remember, when you use this thing, remember to sew it. Okay? Otherwise, they will say, how come Siamen didn't teach you such a basic thing? Okay? So, uh, our reputation is at stake. Remember to sew this when you use this. Now, the sky is getting dark now. And if you look up there, it seems like it's going to rain soon. Well, I, I initially wanted to bring you up this river into the... There's a beautiful stream up there I really want to show you. And, but probably we see whether the weather changes or not. Now, the reason why it's very dangerous to trek on a river when it's like this is because of this. If you come over here, let's say this is the river that I want to bring you up there. If you track here, and if somewhere up there is, has been raining, and the ground soaks up the, the water, and it's a, suddenly an onslaught of water like this, if you are right in this path, there, is a, there will be a sudden current that comes your way. Okay, uh, sometimes it can be very suddenly, or sometimes it can be gradually. But so that's why it's not a good idea to track up a river, especially a waterfall, when it has been raining. Okay, you have to wait a while to let the water clear first. So this is something you all must pay attention if you come to a, a, a river system. It's actually fairly common, this phenomena. And you can go to YouTube and watch a lot of such compilations uh, in Malaysia. It's called, I think, Ayem Mata in, in Malay. Now, let's talk about our raceway system. 
uh, which is our topic today. Now, this, this waterfall already has a natural raceway system. If you come here, now this is the definition uh, of a flow through system. Now the word flow through means fresh water, clean water is constantly flow through your aquaculture system. And in this case, we have a natural pond here that you can keep your fish here. And your fish will be very happy if he lives in such a condition. This is ideal for them. Uh, because you have, you have water bringing the, the nutrients away, the waste away, and you have the constant new source of oxygen uh, in the pond. Now, the significance of water flow to fish is this. Have you ever, in a hot climate like Malaysia, and when it's very hot, you, you turn off the fan, you sweat. But the moment you turn on the fan, Although the temperature remains the same, the wind will cool you down significantly. Now it brings you fresh air and it also evaporates your sweat. It's the same for fish too. If you have water flow like this, flowing through, the fish will, will be happy for it because it will be cool and uh, it brings in fresh air for them. Fresh dissolved oxygen in this case. Now another thing I want to point out to you is we have been talking about dissolved oxygen. But it's not just dissolved oxygen that is at play here. Organisms such as fish breathe out carbon dioxide. And when carbon dioxide is dissolved in the water, it turns the water acidic. And if we, evap if we churn the water like that, we cause the carbon dioxide to leave the water and to, be e and to be evaporated out of the water. So it's not just oxygen, it's carbon dioxide and oxygen at play too.